Hello and welcome to a video from the Science Break relating to acids and alkalis. Today we're going to have a look at the key features of acids and alkalis and how we identify whether a solution is an acid or an alkali. So let's jump straight in. We can start with a couple of places where we can find acids and alkalis. So in terms of acid, it's found in what we call citrus fruits. Now these are fruits such as oranges and lemons. It's also found in fizzy drinks. So all fizzy drinks have carbon dioxide in them, which makes them acidic. It's found in living things as well. So in your stomach, you will have acid in there as well. And a couple of examples of acids are hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid. These are two that we very commonly work with in chemistry. In terms of our alkalis, these are found in cleaning products. Soaps contain um, alkali as well as other cleaning products. There's also alkali conditions in the small intestine. And also we have a couple of examples. One is sodium hydroxide and another one is ammonia. Again, common chemicals that we work with in chemistry. Now, we have two containers here. One contains acid and one contains alkali. And by looking at them, we can't really tell. But what we can do is use something called litmus paper. Now litmus paper is uh, slightly yellowy orange in color. You can get it in little strips like this. And we can use it to decide or to figure out which one of these would be acid and which one would be alkali. So all we do is we um, dip into the the liquid or the solution that we are testing and we look for a color change and if it goes red where you've dipped it in that means we have acid and if it goes a blue color then we have alkali so litmus paper turns red in acid and turns blue in alkali so this will tell us whether we have acid or alkali it doesn't tell you how acidic or how alkali a substance is for that we need something else so there's our acid and there's our alkali, but we can use a different method to figure out how strong or weak an acid we have. So again, here we have our two containers. We now know that one is acid and one is alkali, but we use something slightly different. We use something called an indicator. And in this example here, we've got something called universal indicator. So we put a drop or two of universal indicator into our solution. And when we have acid, it goes like a red color, but it could be anything from a yellowy all the way up to quite a bright red color. And we try alkali, it goes to a bluey color or a purpley color. Now, while this tells us we've got acid and alkali, it also tells us extra information as well. What we need is what's called a pH scale. So we can measure how strong an acid or an alkali we have by measuring its pH. So if we look at our acid, we can match our color to our pH scale, and here it tells us that the pH of the acid is pH 3. If we look at our alkali, we can compare it and see that it's pH 12. So this gives us a more precise value of the acidity or alkalinity of a solution. Now, a couple of things that we must know and remember about the pH scale. So firstly, it goes from 0 up to 14. And from zero up to six, these are the acids. So pH zero up to pH six, this would be acid. If we go from pH eight to pH 14, this would be alkali. And right in the middle there at pH seven is what we call neutral. So that greeny kind of color there gives us an idea that our solution is neutral when we use universal indicator. We can also see that all the way down the end at zero, that's a strong acid. And if we go nearer to neutral, that's our weak acid. So the nearer we are to neutral, the weaker the substance. So that's a weak acid at pH 6. If we go to a weak alkali, that would be pH 8. And our strong alkali is at the other end at pH 14. Okay, so quite important to know and remember this scale. Um, so do have a look at it and make sure you are very clear with this idea that's on the screen now. The final thing to look at is the idea that if we have acid and alkali and we mix them together very carefully in carefully measured amounts, we can get what's called a neutral solution. A neutral solution, you could tell it's neutral because it goes that green neutral color. And we call this a neutralization reaction. So this is a neutral solution we made by mixing acid and alkali. 
So that's the final thing that we need to go through for acids and alkalis, some key but important information to know and remember about those. And in the next video, we're going to do something slightly trickier related to acids and alkalis.